Okay. I think I set it up correctly this time. Well, welcome to anyone who joins now live, which I think is not going to happen. <laughs> I didn't really announce this to anyone. And if by any chance you arrived here later, welcome. And I hope whatever I do here, I'm still a novice in ZBrush. I can't say I'm an expert at all. And uh, I'm still using projects like these for practice. Um, right now, this one is one of those practices. So I'm probably going to be doing things that anyone who knows how to use this tool is going to say, you know, why did he do it that way? There's a much easier way to do this, much faster. Um, that's simply due to the fact that I'm no expert. And um, right now, the way I'll be doing things is like, uh, see it from this perspective. I'm, I'm just an artist that's already worked with actual clay and I see ZBrush as a way to do that. So there's a lot of technical things that I still don't know um, and I'm still learning, but I just stick to the fundamentals and just basically do sculpting, you know, basic sculpting. This right here, this, this horn, I made originally, as the description says, in 3D Studio Max. I work with the Helix. Um, a Helix spline, and I applied a lathe to it. I edited the lathe to give it this tapered look. Then after that, I com converted it to a poly object and worked on the base curved it a little bit if you notice it's slightly curved because this is for cosplay so it'll fit better the shape of the head and also worked on the end right here let's get it closer and take a look at it right now it's not subdivided so it still looks very blocky but that's great that means it's I'm gonna be able to subdivide it and get more detail on it I want to make it look like uh, the picture of, of uh, or ram's horn I saw that the person who actually wants this um, liked the type of horn. She, she wanted that specific type of horn, so that's what, what I'm going for. This thinner kind of shape it has with that streak going on one end and the smooth on the other. And now I'm just going to work on it and make it more organic so when she 3d prints it it'll look a, a little better than what it looks right now i like i really like the way it came out in 3d studio max and zbrush in this case is just going to be the tool i'm going to use to detail it i didn't try to i probably could have made it from scratch in zbrush but as i said um I'm, 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 much, I'm very much a noob to this tool. Although I did use the original version uh, or one of the original versions back in, I think, 2010 or from 2008 to 2012, I was doing stuff in ZBrush on and off. Um, my main thing is I'm a designer and illustrator. I do photography as well. Um, and 3D modeling has always been like something I really want to get into but never have up until now. I decided I'm going to start learning how to do actual uh, detailed, better modeling and specifically with ZBrush, working sometimes in 3D Studio Max because especially hard surface modeling, I still have no idea how to do it correctly here. <laughs> so until I do... Let me get the microphone closer. Um, until I do, I'm just going to keep working with both both tools and figuring it out, you know, what's the best way to do it so I won't have a lot of trouble when I finally get to ZBrush because I already did something for another project and it kind of came out of, kind of weird. 
when it when it went into ZBrush. And I think it was because I didn't, especially with the borders, I didn't apply chamfer to it. And uh, then when I subdivided it, it looked wonky. By the way, this model I'm going to share in my Thingiverse um, profile, as I already did another model I made before, the Mortem Rex from Jurassic World Alive. Or at least my, my version of it. And it's already there if you want to download it and print it, if you have a 3D printer. And this is going to go there as well. And probably most of the things I'm going to do in 3D are going to go there for free. Um, I don't want to charge for the stuff I'm using to learn, you know. And even when I do make something maybe better looking, um, I'm, I'm probably still not going to charge for it. This is something I'm doing for fun. So I like, I'm like that. I'm not, somebody said I was a good person for doing that, but I don't think I'm a good person. I just like to do it. Um, I'm not a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not like, oh, wow, I'm such a good person no, for sharing this. This is no big deal. Okay, so enough talk. I'm going to get into the actual modeling. So I think the first thing we should do is divide it a little bit. So I'm going to try something that didn't work very well before, which is... Uh, Let's see if, if I make it higher res. It really looks pretty nice. I don't know if making a dynamesh. See, that's that's the part I don't like. And it's probably something I still don't understand. But when I turn it into a dynamesh and I divide it, it doesn't look that good. It looked a lot better when I just did a higher res, a res, um, higher res version of it and just leave it, leave it like that. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start adding uh, this tech, uh, tech. Basically what I'm going to do is just add texture to it. So by the way, this interface look, if you have ZBrush and you're a, a noob to it like me, you're going to probably notice it's... Um, it looks different, and that's because I grabbed this um, interface from a tutor I was following on some page. And uh, I've modified it from what he had. I added more things in it, but if you ever want to modify the ZBrush interface, it's really easy. You just go to Preferences, and uh, under Config, I don't know why they, these buttons look weird, like they're turned off, but they're on. And if I enable customize here and then I grab something from anywhere within the menu, let's see, I'm just going to grab something. I don't know what. Um, something I don't have there. Um, see, these already highlight. If they're already there, Notice to the right, see that? They turn on because they're already there. It's The interface is actually showing me they're already there. But if I had, those are over there on the top left. If I had something here that, oh, I know. Maybe something from, oh, but these open up complete windows. So I would have to drag and drop them here and I don't have that much space but maybe I can grab something from in there. Like for instance, something I'd like to do, or you have to do when you're exporting for 3D print. These, these are very high poly. poly. Uh, you don't really notice it, but there, there already is already a lot of polys in there. And if you export for 3D print, it's gonna be a very large file. And the more you add, the more divi divisions you add, the bigger the file is. And, you know, ideally, if you want to print something, the file shouldn't be like more than 100 megabytes. That's already pretty big. But there is a way to, to lower uh, that poly count. And that's uh, to use the decimation, ma decimation master. 
So maybe I can grab, we're still in modify an interface. Uh, maybe I can grab this button by holding control alt. Let's see, hey, there we go. So I could add it here. So this is a pre-process current. That means I will be processing, pre-processing the selected tool. Right now we only have one tool. Tools are like separate objects within ZBrush. Like you have, um, like if I added another horn here, duplicate it, it's gonna become another tool. So um, that's basically what they are. So if I pre-process, let me show you the sub-tool thing. See, it's right here. It's only one tool here. By the way, if you're new to ZBrush and you select something and then this happens, don't worry. Your original file, the one that you were working on, is still there. It was just replaced by this. So you replace it here. But if I click here, there, it's back. So don't freak out if that happens at any time. Uh, sub tools that you create and you add to your scene are always going to be here. So as long as, as, as uh, you don't permanently delete them. But um, anyway, if I were to pre-process current, I'm going to pre-process this. I'm not going to do it right now because I'm, I'm still working on it. But the moment you want to export for 3D printing, this is really important. So let's add another one of the buttons. And then we could add decimate current, but we need all these sliders as well because we, we want to establish how much we decimate. The standard is like 20%. That's pretty low, but you could low, go lower. You, could all, you can change this and it'll, it'll change here live. The model will start looking wonky, you know, weird. You'll start losing detail. It'll, look, it'll smooth out stuff. It'll just look bad the moment you go too low. Uh, and you'll know by just uh, changing the slider. But let's just add this button here. Decimate current. So these two. And then when you're done changing your, inter your interface, you go to preferences again and you turn off enable customize. And then, of course, it's very important that you save your UI the way it is. So when you open, I don't know if it, it'll change automatically to the, to the one it had before if you don't save it, um, you know, that it's only related to a session, or you could lose it at some point. So saving it, and, I, and I'm guessing that if you save it, because it's saving it on, on, this, on the C startup, so that means it's probably the one it's going to use every time it loads. So... Since I, I don't want to keep these buttons there, I'm not going to save it, but it's important to save it. And I would suggest you even make a backup of this somewhere, just in case. If you like the way you have your interface. Because you always could get used to the way it, it, uh, it's set up the, the, the moment you open up the application. But I guess as you learn how to use it better, um, then you probably will have tools you use more than others. And having those on your interface directly there for access. Of course, learning quick keys is important as well. That saves you a lot of time from actually moving away from what you're doing to going to click something. Instead of that, if you have like quick access keys that you've memorized, it makes a big difference. Like for instance, if you want to go from perspective to isometric. Isometric is the best way to model because it's an unrealistic point of view where there is no perspective. Because when you have perspective, things look closer, bigger the, way, the closer they are, but that means it's a little bit harder to model, especially if you have like a background image as a reference. So using isometric view I don't know if, the, if, if it's called that way in ZBrush again I apologize I'm no expert uh, but from other applications I know this is called isometric it's like when you draw a cube using straight lines with no perspective um, 
I don't, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but just look it up. Isometric versus perspective view. So anyways, having it in, in isometric is important. Another good thing to know how to use is this, this right here. This shows you top view and bottom view. You click it again, right and left, front, back and front, or front and back. I'm not sure. Oh, the, the guy actually tells me. You see? Front, back, front, back, top, bottom, left, actually, yeah, right, and left, right. And then if you hit, if you click shift and you move, it's gonna, it's gonna move specifically to one of these views. Another basic thing to know is your control and alt keys with the right button. One of them is zoom and the other one is moving the object around like this. I'm gonna change the background as well. Uh, I'm getting lost here, sorry for that. It's a document, it's called back. It went for white because that's the color that's active right here. I'm just gonna go for black. Document, back, and then the, the color of the object changes, but it's no problem. We're gonna go for, uh, I like to work with Mac Ray. And of course, because the object is black, as was the background, I don't know why the background can change. Document, back. It's only changing the... This is the color of... That's the object right there. But the background, I think it's... Oh, there we go. It's because of the range. Take the range away, it's a flat color. Anyway, I like to work like that. And map cap gray, I think we could use this one. What would be a better color for a horn? Nah. Yeah, I like that one. See this one this one is gonna this one is great for highlighting details as you add them. Think of it like when people are painting an object, if you do prop work or stuff like that, and and then you weather and uh, apply washes to the object to highlight stuff, this type of um, kind of texture it has while you work is great for that because it's going to actually highlight whatever you do. Let me just show you quickly. If I do something here. Oh. Well, right now the object is very low in the in in um, division, so we're going to have to bring it up. Divide it again. Intensity I'm gonna change the, the notice notice what happens to the icon of the brush. If I make it like this, think of it like a, a soft if you use Photoshop, it's like a softer brush. And then like this is a harder brush. And then draw size, which you can change by just hitting S is the size you work with. I know very little hotkeys so sorry for that <laughs> but they show right right here see you is the intensity that's how hard it's gonna work on your object you can also use like in Photoshop um, the keys you uh, what are these called on your keyboard the parenthesis but it's square parenthesis I don't know how it's called on the top right of your key of your uh, of your set larger set of keys without going to the numericals or the vectors you could use it to by step by step just make it smaller or bigger anyway 
We still need more detail. It's not good enough. Okay. I don't like to divide too much because it starts taking a toll on your system. See, now it's, it's very slow compared to what I'm doing. I guess that's why you have to use dynamic, I mean, um, Dynamesh. And I can't apply Dynamesh here unless... Ah, damn. See, that's... Sorry for that expression. Um, well, it definitely moves a lot faster. And I guess because this is, this is the type of object, object it's supposed to be, the fact that it looks like this might work. But that hole right there, those holes, I hate that. I don't like it. That could be simply because of the way I made the object in 3D Studio Max, and I don't really know the right way to export it yet. Um, it could be that. But uh, let's see what happens with soft clay. Hmm. Don't like it. All right, so I guess we have to subdivide. Clay kind of looks nice. Standard about this one for cutting it inside. Nope. Okay, we're running into a problem here. See? Look at look at how it jumps. I think that's related to my system having a hard problem with what I'm doing right here. something. I'm going to go back to the basic model we had and see if, if I use Dynamesh right now, that's horrible. So maybe, I guess it's just the fact that I imported this from 3D Studio Max originally. And then maybe just smoothing it out is going to help. By the way, with any brush you're using, if you if you click and hold S, it'll become the smooth button. And while you're clicking S, you can change intensity and all the characteristics of the brush as it is in smooth mode. So I'm not even able to smooth this out very much, but it's looking a little bit better. Okay, we're going to do it like this. And I apologize for my noobness. Alright, so... We're going to try something before we get into actually bulging out the texture in here. And, you know, there's ways to apply texture by using alphas. But we're not going to do that right now, we're going to do that at the end we need the larger shapes, which are these horizontal, I don't know how you call these streaks that you have, like the bulges. I think they relate to growth on the horn. Oh my God, that looks not good. Um, soft, oh, soft clay looks a lot better. So we're, we're gonna first make some cuts here, less intensity just to guide what we're doing. And also, I should be using my, my tablet display for this. I'm working with the mouse right now. It's just a bad habit. Hmm. 
I'm just using this as a guide. And I'd rather work with less intensity and then build up on how deep the cut goes after. Also, sorry about the noise. This is my CPU. It's a, a Ryzen or Ryzen, I don't know how it's called. It's an AMD. And I bought the UPS, the, the CPU in, uh, in the US. I live in Costa Rica, so it got sent here. I bought it on Amazon. It's a Dell computer, you know, Dell computers are pretty good. But the thing is, the processor the the processor it has has no coverage for warranty for a live so basically what happened is i bought a dell computer because of the warranty service they have which is great i think this is not the way it should be oops <laughs> got scared for a moment there uh, when, when that happens it disappeared just click on this button right here this button that says zoom 3d it, it's gonna go to wherever your object is just in case it disappeared from the screen because you could see the soup the sub tool was still here but i just couldn't see it you could like move your uh, screen around and try to find it but it, that way it's a lot faster let's see if This is where it goes. It seems the that's where the fold is. You know, one of the reasons. Oh, I was telling you about the CPU. Let me finish that. Finish that story. So my CPU started acting up like this. That noise it has sounds like a jet plane, and. It turns out what's happening is that the fan, which cools down the processor, for some reason cannot communicate with the motherboard. So even at the level of the BIOS, you can't do anything. So I called up Dell and man, they, they came a lot of times. So I gotta give them credit for that. Um, they changed it everything I mean they even brought a motherboard in case I wanted to change the motherboard and they left the parts here I actually have almost a whole computer in my closet um, without the of course the hard drive and and the box and everything else but the only thing I don't have is the processor and what happens is what happened was that the processor was not covered in warranty where I live because they don't sell that model in Latin America, Central America. So the problem was never fixed. I mean, I don't, I don't worry that the processor is gonna overheat anytime soon. Although this CPU is a little bit old now has three years I, it's reaching that time when you actually have to consider buying a whole new computer it's actually lasted a long time three years is more than the average time for changing your computer and the reason is because I bought an actually powerful computer at the time it's uh, 32 RAM and it's um, a hybrid of of uh, 
solid state and regular old hard drive. And, and the Ryzen processor was, or Ryzen, I don't know how you say that, was a pretty fast one as well. So, I mean, I, I use it for gaming, and right now I'm using it for 3D, as, 3D as you can see, and, and it's working fine. But, you know, one thing you have to worry about a little bit is if at any point um, you're going to have a problem with heat, because it's directly related to that, the fan that cools down the processor, which is working at full power all the time. That's the noise. So I even have <clears throat> one of the parts they left here was one of those fans. But if the fan stopped working, I don't, I don't care about the fan. It's it, the processor is the one that's going to die because it's going to overheat and then it is going to stop working permanently. See, this is the part where I should be using a pen and an actual dis display tablet because the mouse is not made for this. It's just the fact that that screen is so large, I have to disconnect one of my monitors, put the screen on my desk, on my desk and it takes up space in the front because you want to be able to draw so you can't have it all the way in the back of the desk like I have the monitors. So I'm lazy. I'm lazy and I don't want to do it. So I'm stuck with the mouse. And the pain you afterwards get on your thumb for holding that mouse so hard. So you get a very neat straight line. A model I'm, I'm going to be doing, um, I'm actually working on right now is, and I'm also going to have for free on Thingiverse. If you're old enough, or if you're a fan of fantasy and cult movies, there is this movie from the 80s, one of the first movies Tom Cruise was in. He's actually a kid in that movie, as was I at the time. <laughs> um, which is called Legend. It's, it's a very nice fantasy movie. It's a totally cult. And one character in that movie that fascinated me a lot was the demon, the main bad guy in the movie, which is called the Lord of Darkness. He has these gigantic horns that, you know, he has to have a chiropractor or somebody taking a look at him weekly from the neck pain of holding up those horns. They're crazy big, but it's such a cool design. And so much, and, and I mean, the whole outfit and look of the guy, his makeup, everything is so much like the, the hard rock bands from the 80s. You know, the guys that dress with these tight pants and the crazy hair and jewelry and, you know, makeup, painted nails, all that kind of stuff. Even the way he, he behaves or acts is a little effeminate. <laughs> I mean, it's so cool. It's like, you know, so, so much nostalgia. A different time. That's why I love series like Stranger Things. Because, you know, I am a child from that time. I lived that as a kid, and there are memories, everything like Star Wars and all that kind of stuff. If you're a millennial or younger, I mean, certainly those things can be part of who you are, for sure, but it's never the same if you've actually 
live through it, you know? I'm not trying to say, you know, it's better for me or I have the right or anything. It's, it's just a fact. It's like many of the stuff that younger generations are living through right now. You can certainly live it. I mean, if you're still alive, you can do whatever you like and have preferences of whatever you like. But the way you absorb it is probably going to be different. And you, the way you utilize it is certainly going to be different than from a, you know, a younger generation. Remember what I said about uh, details standing out? Let me show you something quickly. If I use another, if I use another texture, like the, the basic clay one, it looks a lot flatter. If you notice, things they do stand out still, but if you use this, it's gonna use, it's gonna stand out a lot more. There's a lot of textures you could use, like. See that one? That one, you barely notice the detail. So this is these are the ones I like to use. Of course, there are others that work differently. That looks pretty cool. But this is normally the one I go to this one or this one right here. Depending on what I'm working on. Wow, that sounded like I do a lot of work here. <laughs> Let's do a quick experiment to see how this is going to work when I start building it up. So what I'm going to do right now is mask and let's change the focal shift on the mask, make it, <clears throat> make it nice and tight. You hold control and then you mask. And the reason why I'm masking is that I don't want to affect those cuts I've been making and working so hard on. Very therape therapeutic, but it's a lot of work. So I just want to make sure that I don't get into those when I do this. You saw that what happened just now that the mask getting softer that's because I was holding click and clicked somewhere else on the model and then it it's a fast way of softening the mask but we don't want that right now just just hit control Z undo There's probably a faster way of doing what I'm doing right now, as I said. Well, I'm not the expert to tell you what that faster way is going to be. There's a lot of tutorials out there for this, most of them free on YouTube. Just look up for a specific thing you want to know how to do. Sometimes the hardest part is knowing how to ask the question because if you don't know the technical terminology, 
you're probably going to have a hard time figuring out exactly where to find what you need because you can't ask the right question for the search engine. Um, that's why sometimes it's better if you take some uh, actual courses online. Uh, and I'm not being paid by anyone to recommend anything. So this is just from personal experience. I found that um, one of the best places I, I could go to for quick tutorials. By the way, if you want to erase mask, just add it to control, you hit Alt, and then holding Alt and Control together will erase mask. So I was saying about a place to go, and it's Skillshare. And uh, as I said, I'm not getting paid by anybody to say this. It's just I find that the courses there are very simple, to the point, direct. It's a great place, and it's cheap. I mean, you only pay a monthly fee. So I'm going to stop talking about it because I'm not getting monetized or anything like this. Uh, so I'm not going to give free advertising for anybody even if it's a really good place to go. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Forest Gump style. Okay. I guess this is a lot more fun doing it than watching it. <laughs> if you are getting here after the fact it's not live anymore I guess it's going to be better for you because you could just skip ahead and not listen to me drone on about all types of topics I just wish there was somebody here chatting with me just saying hey you know I saw that movie too I like it I want to see that model when you have it finished I have a 3D printer. I know you don't have 3D printers, so I can print one out for you. <laughs> 3D printer. It's in my bucket list, but it's going to stay there for a while. And even though they're cheap now, it's, you know, there's other priorities. I have four small kids and other things I'm not going to talk about that are reasons why it's not a priority. Sadly. I wish I had one. For now, this is the way to go. Just learn how to do this stuff and then maybe have someone print it for you. I'm just going to do these two and then try out, see how. I'm going to use the clay brush since it seems to build nice and smooth and see how it works. So what we want to affect is what I actually have uh, blocked out, masked. So the way you do that is you have to flip the mask. So this is no longer masked and the rest is. So all you have to do is outside of the object, hold control and left click. See, there should be a mask there. I guess this is... This is the way I should have done it before. It would be a lot faster. See? Uh, learning as we go. So actually, that's what we're going to do for the other ones. Okay. So let's use, mm, yeah, we could do two. 
Use the clay. Clay does like, like if you were adding a layer of clay to something. And it's very intense. Don't be so intense. You want it to be a soft buildup. See that? It's adding volume to it. And we're going to see the difference once I unmask. It's going to be a lot clearer what happened. That was too much. The slower you move your mouse, the more it actually does it it's it's pretty interesting Organic modeling shines. trying to make it like you know it's it, not only it's weathered but that it uh, it has a growth pattern kind of thing
If we want to deactivate whatever it is we have masked, we just have to create a mask outside. So I guess we're going to have to smooth this out a little bit. I was thinking also that for that base to glue on properly, maybe it shouldn't be smooth like it is right now. Maybe we could add a pattern to it so it so the glue sticks better with the surface you put it on. Like an inverted thing kind of thing. just a standard one. If we do it like this, it's going to be that way, but if we just hold out, it's going to cut in, but that's too much, and it's too big. So about like this, now it's too little, a little bit more maybe. See, I'm not that bad with the mouse. I mean, it's not perfect, certainly, but it's out of years and years of not having a tablet. Now that I have it, I don't use it. Know that's gonna help maybe even if it's gonna actually show it on the print This has to help. Maybe it's not deep enough. I just didn't want to overdo it. Sorry I stopped, I'm just going to my social media and see if anybody is interested. No one's coming in. Okay. Come 
might just stop and leave it and then just share the the link actually to the Thingiverse my Thingiverse profile where I'll be sharing the final model you could just go there and get it when it's done maybe that was too harsh let's move that out a bit to a bit. Yeah. This is a lot faster to do when you're drawing instead of just doing it here. It's a big horn. A lot of steps. Can you imagine how much it would take for an animal to grow a horn like this? Actually, I have no idea how fast they grow on actual rams. But it must be years. It can't just be... Maybe decades. How long does a goat live? Or a ram? I wonder if their lifespan is like a dog. I think they live longer than dogs. I'm not sure.
I think we got a system going here. It's a lot faster now. So if you want to leave a comment <clears throat> on the recorded video, because I'm, I think I'm not going to get anyone to show up, uh, and you have a question, and uh, there, I, I, I kind of did a, a little bit of on the side comment kind of tutorials for some of the use of ZBrush if you're somebody who's completely new to ZBrush, and I explained also at the beginning. Um, that I'm new to ZBrush in a way, even though I used some of its first versions. I just got back into ZBrush this month. So I consider myself new to the software because it's changed so much. I mean, it's still the same, but it's not the same. There's a lot of new stuff in it, a lot of improved things in it. So I will probably tend to be doing things in not the most efficient way. So this is more like empirical kind of somebody who's sculpted with actual real life clay and stuff like that. Just, you know, the basics. But there is some stuff at the beginning of the video that you might find useful. Some tips, some basic, very basic tips. That is if, if you're skipping ahead, which is something I, I normally do when I, when I watch a, a video that was live but is no longer live. I just skip ahead to the good parts. So you probably did that already. If you did, I get it, but some of the stuff I've said is kind of useful. So make sure you don't miss out on it. It's on, on the first rambling part of the video. <laughs> it's already looking nice. I wonder how it looked when, well, I know how it looked better once we add all this to the rest. It's kind of nice. I'd love to have a printed out copy of this. Which I can't buy myself. I need somebody to print it out for me. Someday I will get a printer. It's probably going to be a resin printer. Originally I was interested in PLA, but resin just prints a lot better. And it's, I think it's becoming easier to use and less messy.
<sighs> this process, I guess, it's something like knitting. Very relaxing. But I guess watching it must be boring. Not only relaxing, but satisfying. It's funny how you have the habits from real life artwork, which is like stepping away from what you're doing and just walking around it and looking at it. Because you, you, you fall in love with what you're doing, with what you're doing and, uh, and you just want to see it and see if it's looking the way you envision it. And that's one of the things that's so great about 3D modeling software like this. The fact that you can actually do that virtually. You know, stepping away, walking around it, looking at it, enjoying it, I guess. Horns like these are really cool. Maybe if I had shared this also on Twitch, maybe somebody would jump, would have jumped in to look. Because right now, this is a abandoned town in the desert. Nobody's around. It's actually getting thin enough that I'm cutting into the other side, so I guess I should lower the intensity and the size of the brush, I guess, a little bit. No, maybe not so much because it looks weird, but yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's not cutting it anymore. This rig is no longer there. Hmm. And we should add it in. Maybe this 
standard will be better. That's too much. Soften it a bit. smooth out when I subdivide it, it kind of smooth out. add so much more interest to the model with it gone it kind of loses that organic kind of feel it has that it's not perfect because things in nature like this might not look really perfect I'm gonna have to subdivide a lot more for this maybe if I mask it out I could subdivide here it then. Oh. So let me do it. I was in the button, wrong button. <laughs> yes. Something went wrong here. What was it? Oh, it's too high.
should have looked at the setting I had on the brush before changing what I was doing, just to make sure that there wouldn't be a significant difference. But, you know, I guess we could do something with this horn as well to make it more interesting. I've noticed that sometimes horns have like a thicker part compared to the rest. Maybe we do that to this horn right here. Uh, but maybe it should be lower. Let me see if I can find the reference. seeing what I'm talking about. I've seen it. Maybe it's just somebody who did an illustration and did it like that. Oh, here it is. Ah, there it is. Big horn, cheap, cheap ram horns. There is like a growth difference at some point on the horn. And... Maybe we could do it like here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So, I guess we could make it bigger. Yeah, we could work with scale. But maybe center. By the way, if you want to use this, uh, the widget, the, what do you call it? Yeah, let's call it widget. You just hold Alt and then you can move it around with these arrows right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to center it to this division right here that I created. Kind of align it to the base of that subdivision. So maybe, maybe the, it'll change size the way I want it to. Cause I could always create like a separate object and then double the thickness here or choose how much it's gonna how thick it's gonna go that could be another way to do it just finish what I'm doing and just do that and it's gonna be like a whole layer across the whole thing yeah maybe that should be the way I do it not this way but since we masked it already just let's give it a try See what happens. It's working. I don't know if it's going to look cool. Let's 
Let's move it out a little bit. smooth it out I wish there was somebody here chatting so I could get some feedback right now if this is a bad idea or not even worth doing it. No, I, you know what? Let's undo. I think the person who wants this wants a more feminine uh, kind of stylized kind of thing. Not so much a uh, a harsh kind of horn that has that different growth pattern or whatever you call it so yeah let's go back to what we're doing okay we're almost done here anyway with this part at least Well, if you're if you're a noob to kind of noob to a lot of the stuff in ZBrush, that thing I just did there with the uh, the gizmo is the right word, <laughs> not the widget, the gizmo. How to move it around and center it? That's pretty useful when you want to modify or move something around. This definitely is like the process of knitting in the way that it's repetitive and very relaxing. I guess biologically we need patterns. Everything in our body works with patterns. Starting by a heartbeat, a rhythm. It's a pattern. See, I'm gonna start rambling pretty soon. 
about nonsensical things. If anybody ever saw Cheers, the TV series, kind of like Cliff, nonsensical, not necessarily very accurate statements. It's kind of looking like a rattler, uh, a rattlesnake rattler here. careful there. It could be very easy for me to, to draw on the thing that's behind it. Again, probably something that somebody who's more of an expert with ZBrush would say, oh, all you have to do is blah, blah, blah. I guess you could, I could mask it out just to avoid drawing on it. It's, it's going to be over soon anyway. I guess I'm also not going to have to do a lot of clay work on these smaller ones because they're actually getting that bulging just by cutting into them. And I'm, I'm, I guess it's also because the poly count here is lower. So whatever I'm doing affects more of an area than if I were doing it on another part of this model. Because you, you can see every time I move it, how the poly count goes down and down relative to the area I'm drawing on. And even you can notice how I even like if I I'm, if I make a cut right here, you're going to see how it also cuts on the other side. See? So I have to I guess I have to lower intensity now again. Mm, too much. Almost done. Oh, it actually cut on the other side. All the way. There it is. I wonder how this is going to print out. Well, it the print is actually going to be a large print, so I guess there won't be a lot of trouble with geometry being very thin. But maybe it'll need reinforcement so it doesn't break. Although the resin print, I guess it's flexible. actually deforming it a lot now that I'm cutting. Yeah, it's flattening out. I guess it's because I'm using a very thick brush. Yeah, we're going to need to make this to bulge it out just so it doesn't have a problem with breakage or anything once it's cured. All right, that looks nice. Wow, that's a lot of lines. <laughs> 
Ah, but it's satisfying. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just mesmerized. All right, let's go back to modeling. Stop gazing and loving what I just did. All right, so let's mask out. Man, this is gonna be as much work as the original lining was. It has to be a single trace, so it's nice and neat. This horn reminds me of Skate. I was just watching The Last Kingdom again on Netflix. I've watched that series like, I don't know how many times. Still waiting for the new season. And I just passed the part where... Where Skate gets killed. Drowned, and then just left floating there. Oh, in the water. That was one very bad woman. I'm just getting to that part I really hate of the series where Uthred tries to take back his home and, and he fails. And he's like almost homeless. After all he's done, he basically has nothing. A lot like the king said. He's not in the stories. Although I haven't looked up if Uthred actually is a real... I think he is. Uthred. Of Bevenberg. I think he's a real, actual live... Uthric the Bold, yeah. I had looked that up before. There was some story about that guy. Elderman of Northumbria. From 1006 to 1016. But I doubt his, his story is like the one we see in Netflix. Oh man, I'm dreading also the part that Father Vior could not die very soon. I think, I don't, I don't remember if he dies in the attack to the castle about uh, Bebenberg. Uh, how do you say it? Um, Bebenberg. I think it's Bebenberg. Yeah, Bebenberg. I think he dies there or soon after. 
that was such, that was like a real heartbreak for me the first time I saw the series because he is like a father figure in fact there is the story is setting you up for that because I just saw a chapter where Uthred leaves to go take back his home and when he says goodbye to Bjorka, he says, he calls him father. But Bjorka actually reacts to it because the way he said it was not as father as in priest, but father as in father. And Bjork is already grieving because his wife was burned alive. The characters, you know, is ready to die. He's he's just full of rage and grief. Still, man, that was such a heartbreak. It's it's the most painful death for me in the whole series. I guess it's because my father died in 2014, and you know, that never disappears. And I have four kids, and I think about that, especially because I was very ill this past year so, I'm very ill I, I, and I had no answers for what, I, for what I had all I knew was that I was very ill I had something that's called uh, chronic fatigue but it was really bad at some point up to the point where I couldn't get up from bed and Now it seems that it was psychological, just stress. And man, can stress kill you? Brothers and sisters, if anybody is watching this ever, don't let stress get to you. It will literally kill you, for real. It's not just pain and joints and muscles and headaches and stuff like that. It will kill you. Things will begin to shut down in your body. And I was told by someone that it was stress and it was mental. Uh, but mental becomes physical. And it wasn't the first time I, I let it take over me like I did. And each time... I had this, these episodes, these crises. It got worse. And especially because of the physical system, symptoms. But I always bounced back. I was also more active physically. I was doing more, more exercises. But I am overweight, very overweight. And that certainly doesn't help. And I will be 54 this year. Very soon, actually. And in like less than three weeks and age doesn't help the fact that I've been very sedentary it's something that happens when you work in this kind of stuff you know sit down every all day you become lazy and as you get older and you do the diets to try to lose weight and you do them the wrong way and you end up losing a lot of muscle mass every time you do it so muscles are necessary for the body to work right so one of the symptoms I was having when I was very ill was tachycardia but not so much that my heart would race but more what's called a bounding heartbeat which is like your heart is beating really hard. It's not beating fast. My blood pressure actually has been pretty stable, even, and, and pretty good. It's like 120 over 70 most of the time, even though I'm so overweight. I'm five foot, what is it, five foot nine, I think. But, um, <clears throat> something like 
In pounds, it must be something like 240. That's a lot. And muscle mass has been disappearing in my body, especially upper body. The thing is, when I got sick like this, it all started back in December of 220. It started with gastric problems, which also relates a lot to stress. <coughs> and then I had the, the heartbeat thing, and it started freaking me out the way it would go sometimes, because it was raising. And then I got so weak, so weak, I couldn't stand, I couldn't walk. I was told um, when I did a gast ga uh, gastroscopy, yeah, the thing with the, the, the camera in your stomach, that the doctor was worried about my bra brachycardia which is heartbeat is, my heartbeat was actually very slow like it got to like 40 beats a minute during the time I was out and I saw a heart specialist and the heart specialist said after he did some tests and stuff that he didn't I mean, results looked okay, but there seemed to be something wrong, but he couldn't see what it was. So I had to get a, uh, I had to scan my heart. The results came that my heart was normal. It was a little bit enlarged, just a little bit. And I did have uh, the, the thing where there is like a connection between the two ventricles, but it was when I was, when I was young and it had sealed out. And one of the coronary arteries, which were clean, by the way, which is such good news because I was worried about that, you know, because I'm, I'm overweight and sedentary. I was worried about that because once those get clogged up, man, you're in trouble for life. So they were clean and uh, but he said that one of them actually inserted into the muscle um, before time. Like the way the coronary arteries work is they're like they're like a crown that holds like hands holding the heart from the top to the bottom. They spread out over the heart and cover it like a, like fingers. And the reason why they exist is because those arteries are the ones that actually feed oxygen-rich blood to the heart. Because the blood from the heart feeds oxygen-rich blood to the, all the body. But it's such a beautiful and perfect system that it also feeds itself through those arteries. And what happens is if they get clogged up because of fat, then the heart can't get enough oxygen and that's when it kills you, right? When That's why it's so dangerous. Well, one of those inserted into the muscle before time. It's just a conge um, congenital, congenital defect. Um, but the doctor said that, you know, I've had that all my life, so maybe it could be a problem if I did get COVID. And at that time, we still weren't doing vaccinations here in Costa Rica. So I was a little worried about that because that and being overweight were risk factors, certainly for, and also because 
um, I tend to have weak, like, my weakness is cold-related uh, sickness, like asthma, and I had asthma when I was a kid, and things that relate to the lungs, so none of that sounded good for me for COVID. I got so many tests done trying to figure out where I, why I had that chronic fatigue and I felt so bad. I felt so sick sometimes. Out of weakness, I just felt, I felt so bad. And when you feel like that, you worry and then you feel worse, right? Because you don't know what you have. And I made a huge mistake. My wife kept telling me not to do it. Of <laughs> going into uh, sites that you know you look up your symptom you write up your symptoms or you look for your symptoms and then it tells you what you could have and the prognosis is always the worst like you're dying out of something and you get freaked out, freaked out and then you feel worse but the thing is I saw so many types of doctors and so many specialists and nobody could tell me what I had until uh, another specialist came and said, you probably what you have is stress related. Because everything came back normal, all the blood tests, everything, thank God, uh, nothing else was there. No anemia, no problems with my thyroid, um, no cancer. Liver was fat. You know, it was fatty, but it wasn't stage four or five. And the liver, anyways, is the best organ in your body because it actually can heal itself. If you help it, of course, to heal itself. The funny part is that I was taking, I actually was taking heart medication when, when the heart doctor was telling me, before I can give you a prognosis, you need to take this medication just in case. And that medication actually made me very ill. Because I would, didn't have problems with my heart. I didn't have problems with blood pressure or anything like that. And thinning the blood and things like that is not a good idea when you don't have issues with it because it will create other problems. And I know the doctor was trying to help me, but maybe I shouldn't have taken all that. It's just that my symptoms were so bad that he said, you know, if you have a problem with your heart or something like that, you should take this right now, which I did. And it was very expensive medicine, by the way. And Costa Rica, medicine in Costa Rica is actually very cheap. A lot of people actually do medical tourism to Costa Rica because it's so cheap and it's good. It's good quality. Oh, we have people in here. I'm sorry. I was just, I thought I was alone. <laughs> hey, Allison. Hey, Summer. Are you guys still there? I've been talking to myself basically all this time. I don't know if you guys are still there. Uh, I don't know how to see if there's people on right now. Oh, no, there's nobody on. You guys left already. Okay. I guess it's because I didn't talk back. I'm sorry about that. Okay, hey Allison. Working on your horn. You wanna see it? Up from far away. Mm. 
by the way, I did something here on the base. I don't know if that's going to help. I can make it deeper. I made these uh, grooves on it thinking, you know, maybe this will help it stick better to the surface you stick it on. Instead of being just smooth, having those in there might help. I don't know what your thoughts on it. I could make them deeper. I could make them disappear if you like. And right now I'm working on these divisions, masking this out so I can add more texture. I got caught up on talking about my illness of last year. See, what I'm doing right now is I'm masking out so I can do this to the rest of the horn. Add this texture right here. I have like a 30 second delay. Summer Wars here, I, I think she left already. The chat says actually there's no one online. That's weird. Oh, it says one watching. I just saw where it says. Yeah, one person watching, that's you. been all alone here it's, it's been like you know one of those ghost towns in the old west it's felt like that for a while but my thoughts are you know some people will log in later and maybe get something useful out of this uh, at the beginning of the video I actually get gave some tips but since this is so repetitive and it takes a while to do the whole thing. I guess anybody can get bored. But if they come in later, not live, uh, they'll be just able to skip ahead. Because this takes forever. There probably was a way I could have done this like with an alpha and just texture it out quickly. But then you don't have as much control, especially because these grooves taper out and get smaller. Maybe I could have done this in 3D Studio Max and it would have been faster. And I was just saying before, I don't know if you were on when I was rambling on about many subjects. That this is this is this makes me think that this could be a little bit like knitting. It's kind of relaxing. But it must be boring to watch.
You know, I won't get mad if you print out one of these horns and ship it to me. Just one. And it doesn't have to be big, it could be small. I just want, I just love the idea of having things I worked on physically in my hand. And I don't have a 3D printer yet, so. It'd be really cool if you could do that. Maybe a test print? <laughs> it would be really funny if this model didn't print well after all this work. <laughs> Not funny, haha. -ha. Just funny. As you will notice, I can ramble on a lot. You know, it's getting to a point right here, and I'm not even to the thinnest part of the horn, that what I'm masking is actually masking across the model, and I'm getting a little worried about that because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to mask correctly when I get to those points. I could leave those for later. You know, I did try something before you were on, and I don't know if you've noticed this on horns before, on ram horns. Um, you know, it's easier if I just send it to you via Discord, what I'm thinking about. Where's Discord? So take a look at the horn on that <clears throat> on that ram right there and it has like a different growth pattern on it at a certain point it gets thicker and I've seen that before on demon horns and I've loved it it just adds like it makes it more interesting probably I'm thinking that some no, I don't. It can't be because they broke because it's on both and on both sides. So maybe, maybe it's the animal had a period of time where he began eating differently, or because of age. Something's happened, and it's made the horn less thick. Maybe he's not getting as many nutrients. Oh, let's see what happened there. That's the masking going across. So I thought of doing, I actually did it and I tried it out and it worked. But then I thought, you know, maybe it's not something you want on your horn because it's, it's more delicate, more feminine. I've seen the, the cosplay thing you're doing and it's, more delicate so maybe that kind of a detail is not a good fit I don't know it's your call oh man working with the mouse is painful my wrist is killing me. And it's my thumb basically from holding the mouse like really hard so it's it's even. All right. I'm just going to do I'm going to work with clay here.
the good thing about one of these horns is that the less perfect it is, the more organic it feels. So that's my way of saying I can be messy. It would have been great if, um, what's the name of this guy? Um, Somebody who asked for help with modeling. I think it was Nova Lux. If you could have joined, because I guess one of the ways to learn is by watching, but also it's an opportunity, especially when it's live, to ask questions. Do you do anything in 3D? Allison?
I don't know. <laughs> you know, I just thought about this. I don't know how organic you actually want it to be. Because I'm adding a lot of imperfections to this, but I don't know if you want it to be more stylized. Because this is what I'm doing right now, and that's how it used to look. Very smooth. So difficult to get this right because of the tapering it has. But again, because it's so organic, kind of like can get away with it a little bit. Still there, Allison?
I guess I'm going to end the stream here. <clears throat> I think no one's online anymore. So, yeah. I'm going to end the stream here. And if you want to see the end product, it will be on that link that's in the description to the Thingiverse downloadable 3D printable thing. So, if you stuck around to watch, and if anything in here helped you, that'd be great. And uh, feel free to leave me a message and let me know you did watch it. Okay, so thanks a lot for watching, and we are signing off. Bye-bye.